I wouldn't be sitting here waiting for my groceries if I wasn't scared that somebody was going to do like a triple rob you, carjack you, and knock you upside the head while dropping off your groceries because these are just random people that are driving for Walmart. They're not Walmart employees. Mrs. Cheryl ordered groceries when she first got down here and the girl stole some of the groceries. Now, mm. I never heard that happening. She was like, of course, that would happen to me. And when she called to complain, they were like, we've been getting complaints about her all day. We're so sorry. Like, took like the roast. It was like the <laughs> like the main reason why she needed to go grocery shopping. The other stuff was just so she could have the minimum amount. And she took the meat. I because thought- it's not a Walmart person, right? They need to do that. Like, I'm an employee of Walmart. I kind of had something to lose. These are just like, if you wanted to sign on, and then they can cancel whenever they want and be like, oh, never mind. I'm not coming. Okay. <laughs> so I saw where this lady, um, she had done a grocery delivery and um, the delivery person added additional groceries to her order <gasps> and then took that like, oh, you you get my groceries too while you're getting your own. So it, they just took if you fly. But how did they not? So that must have been like an Instacart thing or something, huh? Yeah, I think it was an Instacart thing. Because with Walmart, it, like it's almost. Yeah, that that couldn't. How would you do that? I don't know. There's a will. There's a way. Where there's a hunger. <laughs> and right now. Yeah, there is pretty... there's ingenuity going on because hunger will drive you to like think your best ideas up. Need my ass out of it though. Shit, I'm tired. Welcome to Rap in Atlanta. I'm Mita Sharice. And I'm Nikki. And in this podcast, we have a frank, honest, and open conversation about the FX show Atlanta. We have noticed that there are similar features in each show. And during our discussion, we offer our impressions on what those features are. There's a That's So Atlanta moment in each episode that most clearly and accurately depicts the spirit of quirk that is Atlanta and life in the American South. Dariusisms highlight the special flavor the character Darius brings to the show because he is easily one of the most layered, complex, and compelling characters on television. There always seems to be a mystical element or some strange thing that happens beyond all logical reason and sometimes scientific explanation. We've all experienced those kinds of moments. And finally, the SGR moment is very plainly the moment in each show when shit got real and we are reminded that life is not a game and desperation has the power to motivate any and every possible action. Today we're reviewing season three, episode three, The Old Man and the Tree, directed by Hiro Mirai, written by Donald Glover and Tofi Kolede. The crew gets familiar with the antics and eccentricities of the ridiculously wealthy and connected. This episode was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like all of them are going to be heavily layered. Um, you know, having a conversation about race and and capitalism, you know, race and money. Um, but we're looking at it from it like an old ultra socialist view now, right, you know, right. which is very opposite of like the experience that we would have in La- at Atlanta or throughout the South. It's mm-hmm. like uh, Europe honestly reminds me of extreme California. Like just, it's just California on steroids. You keep saying that, but yeah, that it, it seems to be like, yeah. Like you have this view that they're, that they're more progressive, that they're more evolved, that things are better there. And then you start seeing like, oh no, like they actually originated the bullshit. They just put it through the, you put it through the American machine and it comes out as something else. But like, this is the grandpappy. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, so like the bullshit has had a longer time to simmer and marinate. So it's, uh, it's a little bit more refined. (laughs) So we, we, um, we come to realize that the crew is now in London walking down the middle of the street in that uh, I think I don't think I've ever seen like a British movie in the past 10 or 20 years where it doesn't feature like the main characters rocking down the middle of the street at some point (laughs) 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 this is the kind of British film thing to do 
Um, I was laughing at their outfits at Donald Glover's at Earns in particular, because there's this, um, there's this content creator on YouTube called Ace Vane. I showed you a video of mm -hmm. him the other day. Ace Fane said Donald Glover dresses like a Korean Andre 3000. And that outfit that he wore in this episode is very much Korean Andre 3000. Yeah, at the bottom, yeah. But at the top, I was cheering the, okay, Donald, come through with a collar and lapels and buttons. I am so proud of you. Mama <laughs> is going to put a little sticker on your incentive chart. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. I only need to see this a nice little rust color to bring out your Africanness, your African um, Americanness. I was just proud. It's like the top half of you would be proud to come home to my mama. Yeah, I don't care about the rest of it. I'm just let's just focus on the fact that you're not wearing a t-shirt out of the grab bag. <laughs> I'm so happy. He looks very, very handsome up here. All he needed was one of those like uh, men in tights. <laughs> like fedoras with the uh with the feather and his outfit would have been complete yeah yeah but the top half was <laughs> you're just gonna i'm bringing somebody ahead. home for thanksgiving this year <laughs> oh no mm -mm. i loved it i mean like just up here i just got excited by the lapels and buttons like a little effort a little brain power had to kick in to put this shirt on <laughs> you didn't just wake up and wander into oh a shirt okay here we go I was just happy everything else baby steps you know okay <laughs> I love how they have the Karen looking out of the window They're all these Negroes Van's hair is magnificent I love when yeah. she she wears her hair full out like that she yeah. had a very sinister vibe about her <laughs> yeah she's all she was like somebody was like I'm here to make mischief but yeah. like she was in the background and like not really, it's like she wasn't really featured in it, but like her presence was felt. And at certain points throughout the episode, mm -hmm. you can tell that like Erin was just kind of like, okay, I'm, I'm trying to stick close to her. I'm trying to stay with her. I'm trying like, hey, this rando like wants me to come back here and come, you know, see some dude that's like locked in a box or something. You want to come with me? Like, it was like, I felt like, she wasn't trying to get away from him, but she just seemed to be like, whatever happens tonight is whatever. Like, I'm just trying to experience things. Like, she didn't seem super pressed, like, you know, hey, you know, I'm over here. Come over here. Or where are you going? She didn't seem concerned. Like, when we get to the end, we'll see, like, yeah, she's chilling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's later on, he asks, are you mad at me? And it's like, okay, just because she's minding her own business and having a good time, she's upset with him. Because she's but not up his butt. Like, yeah, he's not the center. Like, what the hell? Okay. So uh, they come up on the, the address of the place they're supposed to visit, where it's supposed to be a billionaire's house. <laughs> I love how, how uh, Alfred's like, billionaire? They, this ain't no billionaire's house. Mm -hmm. And um, the person that comes to the door, I couldn't understand what the F she was saying either. I'm typically pretty good at like foreign accents, you know, just hearing them. I understood her. <laughs> I did not in New Orleans. <laughs> Where people are committed to mispronouncing shit as much as they possibly can. Know the right way to say it, but like adamant it. Mm -mm. It's Calio. It is not. It is Calliope. It's Burgundy. No, it's not. So I was like, yeah. Burgundy. But as soon as Alfred said, this ain't a billionaire. So I was like, watch this be something crazy. Like it's underground or like, you know, like everybody's not like, oh, I'm rich. So I'm going to go live behind, you know, 14 gates and have like a house that could literally house a small country. Yeah. You know, I thought it was cool. It was very cool. It was very cool. I, I knew once they got past the rough exterior, it kind of reminded me, there was an episode in Succession um where they went to this party it, it was um who was getting married one of them was getting married so they went to a bachelor bachelorette party but they um they went through like these train like yeah train um, tracks and then the party was hit hmm? was it tom's bachelor party like when they were at the well it ended up being yeah. like a club yeah something mm -hmm. yeah yeah so that that uh, it reminded me of that um, I know in Las Vegas, I, both in LA and Las Vegas, I went to 
um, parties where there was a there was a lot of wealth being represented there, and it was that vibe. Like it's not a very loud party, mm-hmm. you know. There's many people there. They're spread out. They're talking, drinks in hand. There are drugs present, but there is like from afar, you're just like, oh, people gathered. And you get up close and personal, then the, the weird reveals itself. And you yes. can happen on like the just strangest interactions and and whatnot. So um <laughs> Van is a friend. I was kind of pissed off. I'm like, is he protecting her? Cause you know, like uh, the guy Will, who's who's the dude's uh roommate, uh Nando. Um yeah. He goes, is she yours? And I was like, well, does he, is he talking about like relationship wise or business wise? I'm guessing that he was like, is that one of your hoes? That's how I I took it as that he might've been, he might've been thinking that she's one of his talents. Cause she, she does look very rock Um, starish. But I, I took it as, I, I decided to take it that way. (laughs) um but him describing her as a friend I guess she is a friend but you know they do have a child like together trying, well looking at how I took it because I thought it was just like oh like you know not somebody be like hey yo that's is that you like is that you whether they mean is this you for this hour you know for this lifetime but it's like is that yours and he said no but I think the friend thing the way I took it was sort of like to tether her a little bit because that dude looked like single and ready to mingle like when he said he was divorced I was like yeah you are because you're like hey like he had that like I'm interested and I think Ern saw that and I took it as trying to protect her it could have been selfish but that dude looked crazy and I would have been like please protect me so look it's like that that unassuming look but I thought he was weird and so I just took it as like he's trying to say she's off limits that's why I took it Oh, but then later we realized that he's he was engaged to MK. So yeah, I don't know. He seemed Which very was random, but he looked. I guess just before we realized that he looked like because she's not yours. Like I'm going over there. Like maybe add her to the little room with the little boy. I don't know, but I got the sense that Aaron was like, "Yeah, no, she's with me." Uh, he just reminded me of st- stockbrokers. The same stockbrokers we hung out with when you came to LA. He reminded me of them. So he actually felt like, yeah, he's, you know, I've seen those types. I know those like types. his DTF? <laughs> <laughs> Never once. I remember talking to this friend, this other friend. I was telling her about some of my adventures in LA. And she's like, did you think he wanted to have sex with you? I was like, honey. I went out on a date with him. I don't care what his intentions were. <laughs> That's, I knew what I was going to do, what he wanted, how he felt, what he envisioned. None of that mattered. So I can't actually honestly answer that question for you. And that's how I felt about those stockbrokers that we went out with. Like, <laughs> they wanted to. They were down for whatever we would have said. And all I wanted to do is ride around this limo, stop and get Starbucks, and then sing Ella Fitzgerald's standards. And that is yeah. exactly what we did. <laughs> they were going along with all that bullshit because they were like, all right, you just put in the time and it's it's going to pay off. I, don't I was think, just like, I'm a Hollywood starlet. <laughs> I don't even think we realized like how we were coming off to them. I know I didn't at the time. Me I was either. like, I just want to go out here and have fun, and they're gonna put the put the bill, okay? And I, I looking like, back on it, right. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> yeah, because they were just like these hot little honeys. They're hot to trot. They're they're looking for a, a a payout, you know, a little transactional action. And I'm like, no, not at all. <laughs> like, uh, black dresses, each uh, telegraphing our personalities <laughs> and. We're small and cute. And then we, we, we went to this restaurant because where were we? We were in Hollywood. So we go to this restaurant. Yeah. And I'm just like looking, I'm like, everybody's just staring at us. You're like, oh, because we're cute. Then I look back on it. It's like, no, they were like, okay, these people must be somebody or they're about to be somebody. Because we we get the optics now, like with these like middle management looking dudes <laughs> rolling up in the limo, they must be managers. And we were just like, 
we made all the right choices, makeup and accessory wise, because everybody's looking so stupid. <laughs> yeah, let's let's go back. All right, you have you. We're both wearing these slinky little black dresses. You are curly, cute. You know, Marilyn Monroe. Very old Hollywood glam. I am bald and blonde. Like I'm closely shaped. Yes, I was blonde. I I had like a you know Jada Jada uh Jada Pinkett Smith. My hair was cut that low. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me keep her name out my fucking mouth. Um so yeah, I was closely shaven, but like the little hair that was there was dyed blonde. So we did not look like oh, we're college, uh, we're college co-eds, just out to have a good time. We were in Hollywood. We looked like, yeah, we're being discovered right now. <laughs> yes. Well, we didn't see it that way. We were college co-eds. Like, I'm with my friend. We're in Hollywood. We're doing it. Yeah. We're, we're, we're in the building. And I'm just like, and apparently everybody else knows. People were like staring. And you could tell people were like, I'm going to take this picture because I don't quite know who this is because they all kind of like look alike. But I can tell that people were like, in about six months, I'm going to be like, oh, I saw her right here. And like, no, that's not what was going on at all. We were just like, let's read a limo. Two, two black girls, two like, two like dressed up black girls with four middle-aged white guys. I think about that now and I'm just like, oh, dear heavenly father. In a, yeah, in a stretch limo in Hollywood. They're all wearing suits. Yeah. Good times. Good times. Of all the times that I was at some wealthy or celebrity person's house, house, I never stole shit. So I was kind of taken aback on why Van is stealing shit. But again, like, I guess if I were in a billionaire's house, I'd be like, oh, he don't need this. (laughs) Yeah, I just, wow. I I don't think I've ever, like, I get it, but it's just like, no, that's don't it, do that it's stealing <laughs> like you don't need to do, do that because it just makes me so like i, I guess because i'm just which i don't think this is unique to me but it's like leave my shit alone like i let you in my house like stop <laughs> don't steal from me <laughs> don't yeah. do that you don't know what it is it's like oh he doesn't need this but also he's a billionaire i could see them being like oh it's a fabrique egg like that you know things are like in a regular person's house, if it's something special, you're going to know it because it's behind little mini velvet ropes up on a platform with its own spotlight in a case. A rich person is just like, oh, have you seen my King Tut scrunchie? Like it's just on the table, like it's nothing. So I would be thinking the reverse way. Like, yeah, it's a billionaire. This is probably super important. That's why it's just on this side table because it's a billionaire. And it's like, is that the first Bible? Like, yeah. The coasters are right behind me. <laughs> she was just going to do whatever came to mind. And I get it. Like, I'm feeling it. She was just, I'm not going to worry about this. I can worry about that. She's in her little lost vein, but she's like, she's having fun with it. Yeah. Cause why not? You know? All right. So when they came in, they're like, oh, we got us some fucking Nando's. I didn't know what they were talking about. So then I looked up the Nando's restaurant chain and it is a South African chicken restaurant chain where the, they use this like particularly nice spice. The um, peri sauce? Yeah, the peri <laughs> Yes. I'll tell you, but I thought that Nando's were. I thought it was the little tchotchkes that, that, that van was like, ooh, I thought, I was like, are those Nando's? Because I'm always like, I'm going to like look at this after. I'll look it up after. I just want to like watch the episode because they said it and they like looked over at her and she was like, but she looked all guilty like, you know, she's holding these like wooden salt and pepper shakers, like these extra large things. And I'm like, are Nando's tchotchkes? And then I was like, wait, the dude's name is Fernando. Because doesn't Al ask him, he's like, wait a minute, are you him? And he says no, but I'm like, he's not. That's just so random that his name was Fern- Fernando. And I mean, of course, I didn't know it was a South African restaurant, but I was thinking like, wait, is he? And he's just saying no. You know how like you're attracted to something because you share you share a name or or right. I think maybe that happened, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But then it's like again, a novelty maybe... for you. Like this is my name. There's a place in my house that it's bearing something that like has my name. Yeah. Like, yeah. like North White Street. <laughs> exactly. <Right. laughs> Like, like, yeah, I, I want street sign because it's that's me. <laughs> I want yeah, I did want to take that street sign very badly so you know, Katrina you could have taken a lot a lot of people were just like well our city's gone there was so many street signs missing 
And people were like, they're doing this to confuse. It's like, no, people were trying to have a piece of something. Like if you're leaving and it's like, this might be it. So many street signs gone. They're doing this to confuse us. Like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> like, so there are these criminals. I have this thing that's like, you gonna think it's North Carols, but it's South Carols. <laughs> you don't even know. You don't remember landmarks anymore, I guess. And somebody, then just like, <laughs> like, like criminals are now just like making mischief. Like, Ooh. yeah, like somebody gets up in the morning. It's like, I'm going to confuse some motherfuckers today. It's on. Capitalist try Carondelet. What? Like, everybody thinks that they're a star in everybody else's movie. Like, no, they're the stars in their own movie. Like nobody is thinking about you as much as <laughs> you are. Believe that. Um, this is where Dara says, I'm going to go get a drink and find a bathroom that you don't want nobody to use. <laughs> but when he said that, I was like, oh, damn you, Darius, don't do that. Like, you know, you have people over, there's always some things where you're like, nope, this is for me. Like, don't show him that. I thought that that really got to the heart of just like a thing that's, like, I knew what he was talking about. It's just like, you know, you open up your house, but like everywhere is not open. Like there are just, yeah. if you were this raised right, it's like, okay, this is where we're allowed to go. Like you should be like, where's the master bedroom? Like, let's get down in there. And when he said that, it's like, yeah, you just got to something because the guy looked like, you bloody bastard. <laughs> like, yeah. Don't you find it? <laughs> There's stuff off limits, definitely. Yeah. Like I know, okay. But yet and still, I'm one of those people, if it's a certain type of house, I always have to use the restroom because I got to see what this bathroom looks like. I, like, I, was, I guess I got a UTI. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's an emergency. Um, because I did that in Ron Paul Peel's house. So do you know who Ron Paul Peel is? Is that when y'all were by the Counting Crows? No, that was another uh, incident. Ron Paul Peel is the maker of the Showtime Rotisserie and Barbecue. Set it and forget it. Oh, set it so, and forget it. Wait, did yeah, you so do his thing? We did the infomercial. So before we did the infomercial, he invited us to his house to get one of the machines. And we were all in there. He had all these machines in his kitchen. That's how big his kitchen was. At a certain point, I was just like, is there a restroom I can use? So I went to this. <laughs> I went down yes, the use the nosy bastard one. <laughs> Door to your left. <laughs> I went down the spiral staircase. So it was on a different level, man. I looked all around that motherfucker. I would so, never <laughs> in that room. I'd be like, no, we don't believe in that. Get out and take your set and forget it. Get out of my house. It's been a like 20 minutes. There's no telling what I missed. But <laughs> while he was, <laughs> he was showing people how to use the machine, I was like, I'll read the fucking directions. So, like, I'm down there. To, so I found the bathroom. I did actually have to go, but I was well, just after looking all that time. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. the sure, I was gotta go. <laughs> the bathroom was really nice because it was one of those things where, like, it didn't have. It, there was a shower, but it didn't have a separate shower stall. It's just like the shower just kind of opened onto the floor, and like the walls of the shower were like literally uh, stone. As if the house was built into the side of a mountain and the stone was allowed oh. to come through to be like the backsplash for the shower or the tiling for the shower. It was gorgeous. Okay, Ron. Yeah. So that's why I spent a lot of time there. And then I was feeling his towels to see like what, <laughs> like, how is this she dead are? now? Or <laughs> Ron Paul Peel? Uh, like, he's going to be like, ah, uh, I need to watch this Rapid Atlanta podcast specifically. <laughs> He might be watching and like, I'm about to have a stone decoy house. There's a podcast. What? <laughs> yeah, let me see here. Oh, he died last year. Oh, he had. Yeah, he died last year. He Beautiful bathroom. Oh, good. Beautiful bathroom. Beautiful house. Ron Popeil he had a lot of money. This dude was a multimillionaire. He was an American inventor and marketing personality. He owned like properties in Las Vegas and everything. So he, sh he needed to have a, a boss ass bathroom. But anyhow, there's neither here it's nor expected. there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's expected. Do you like trees? I felt so bad for Al. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nigga, you're not talking about that. <laughs> Why Harry Henry plays frustrated, irritated so well? Like, Black dude frustrated, not like oh, swing my plans. Just be like, man, oh. 
<laughs> like he's so good at, but I, I felt it, but it was also funny as hell. Like he's like, does a frog bump his ass for the jump? <laughs> like it does. I don't think he's going to be talking about what you're talking about. He is not. Thank you for that, uh, that, that frog factoid though. Never thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Poor, poor, poor Al. He's always just in a situation where the other person is having a great time and he is just seething. <laughs> well he was having a pretty good time though you know he, he got his favorite chicken he didn't have to pay for it you know uh th- during this time Darius goes off and um he's he's found his way to another room where he's popped something into his mouth and it doesn't taste like what he expected it <laughs> so he's trying to find something to drink and then he runs into MK who is like she she reminds me of um one of those Zan types, which is kind of racially ambiguous but exotic. And yeah, black guys in LA do she what she was saying was true. Because mm-hmm. guys in LA, they do go for women who look like M- MK, black guys. I didn't think that black love existed between two black people in LA while I lived there. <laughs> I, I was the only black woman I knew who was dating a black man. Hmm. So yeah that's just i don't know what that shit is about <laughs> then the other dude pulls up socks <laughs> <laughs> who that fit he looks like if socks were just like to animate and just start walking around they would look like him <laughs> he's like I'm, I'm socks i was like you are you are the way darius <laughs> looked at his hair after he took his hat off because he just like <laughs> he just stared full on like an african that was so nigerian <laughs> It was just so bright. I was happy to see Darius, though, express disgust. He's usually pretty like, okay, if you like it, I love it. Like, about everything. Like, mm-hmm. even when, you know, you just cost your friend to spend the last dollars that he had on something that's not going to give him money right away, he's still like, okay. But when he was just displeased, I was so happy. Like, okay, Darius has another lever. It's like, okay, you, you, you do have things like, this is going too far. He did yeah, not like it. It was like, put it back on. <laughs> put it back on. Oh, he just said, your hair is intense. <laughs> <laughs> but it just looked like intensely upsetting. <laughs> His hair was really effed up. Like I can see where he was wearing that hat. He's a candidate for Rogaine. Um, definitely. It was a tragic hairline. And um, and so Darius makes this comment, you know, balding is best pulled off by men who are perceived as dangerous. Very astute observation. It's yeah. true. Yeah. You know, and then he's like, well, I guess that's also why black men are able to pull it off. Well, but, but what I was going to say was like, yeah, dangerous or just sexy. Because <laughs> like, I've seen someone like, you don't look dangerous to me at all. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> I no. like it. I, the danger thing to me with baldness, I associate with white because skinhead, like when I see a white bald man, it just depends. The first, my first thought is like, get away from me. But usually it's either somebody that like grew up around a lot of white people or he has that confidence to where you can pull that off. Now you look like you might be Creole. Like I see that down here a lot where a, a bald white man either gives me, let me protect my neck because you want some other shit. Or, oh, you seem like you're probably cool. Or, are you light skin? Because <laughs> like, <laughs> it like helps some people. It like they, it makes them look cooler. So I get the danger thing, but I've always associated the danger, like baldness and danger, is a bald white man for me. Yeah. Well, it, he what he said is like you can go the Moby route, but nobody likes Moby. That's also true. Um, <laughs> Sorry, that's a tangent. I'm have to write that down. We are yeah. not going to discuss it. But I'm gonna think about it. Um, so then we cut away to that. Now, this was this was the the part of the episode that just tickled me. We were introduced to TJ from Tooting. And um, so you come into the room and I was just like, okay, this is a reference to Jean-Michel Basquiat. Mm. So if you're familiar with visual art, Jean-Michel Basquiat was this brilliant artist during um, during the 80s, um, died young. He died at the age of like 26, 27, a heroin overdose. But 
just as this guy TJ is down in this room locked away uh Basquiat he had a studio in the basement of Anina Nose's gallery mm. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly but he created he was just producing all this art and it was definitely a reference to him because there's pictures and I'll include these in the show notes there's pictures of him creating while he's in this in this uh this basement studio he would just get high and create all day um and he would like that have his canvases awesome. it does sound awesome he would have his canvases lined up against the wall the way tj did but also in that room there were actual john michelle basquiat paintings so the mm. one that urn was standing close to um where he actually looked at that's a basquiat and the one that was on the same wall as the doorway. That was another Basquiat. It was kind of shrouded a little bit. Those are actual Basquiat's worth millions. <laughs> I wow. can easily see them laying around a billionaire's house. Yeah, like mm-hmm. a, just a casual collector. But TJ's claimed them as his. So I don't know if he was, he was saying, well, look around like and everything is mine. I don't, I don't know, like, there's no, I mean, Basquiat's work is very easy to tell. He has a signature style to it. So I don't know if that was just written that way. The show was just writing it that way. Or if that guy was just lying because, you know, he's a liar. He's not that good of an artist. <laughs> His art did suck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or if he's, I don't know, like he doesn't have his own style of voice yet. So he's just like, you know, when you're uh, stand up starting out, you always start out doing somebody else because yeah. you haven't figured out like what your voice is I don't know it could have been like yeah these are mine but it's like yeah but you're copying like, yeah because that was a very close this, mimic yeah like you don't know <laughs> yeah. what your thing is going to be yet because you don't know so he's very young yeah very young but then so um, was John Michelle he like when he started doing the street art with Keith Haring you know um and the other street artists like running with the streets with Fab Five yeah of Freddie and a very young Madonna, you know, they were all very young. But so. you know how some people like, yeah, they're young, but some people just, they have it from yeah. the beginning. And then yeah, he did. you become that person that everybody imitates you at first. And then they start to figure out like, no, this is actually my lane. Like, I guess I, I am putting it in the, I'm framing it through stand-up comedy, but you do see people like, even people who are super famous, if you go find some of them, old stuff, it's like, oh, you were doing such and such like jay-z when he um when when jay-z started he rapped nothing like yeah, that he lazy, was doing very like, fast like, rap, on top like of his, twisted he sounded like everybody else he sounded like Not twisted he, yeah it was just different and then it's like oh no i'm actually just gonna like lay like roll around on his beat and like maybe laugh a little bit like <laughs> like always sound like i'm about to cry but i'm laughing at you too but on the beat because before it was like and then it was like, oh, wow, you didn't, you used to sound like that. And like, you completely forget because what becomes them is so like them, you don't remember anything prior. So it could have been all of those things, like in any creative, um, I don't know, industry or arena, there's imitators. And the true test is like, do you remain an imitator while you're figuring out your shit? And then like you get your own little style and then you can say I was inspired by or are you just like a poser, like just phony, which in this episode, maybe just phony. Yeah, I think he's posing because that he obviously had done enough studying. So it looked like the work that he was doing was echoing like a Jackson Pollock, which is the the splash. But then there was like two very if they were not actual Basquiat's, then those mm-hmm. are very much like Basquiat. Um, there's a couple of like installation artist that he was referencing where it just looks like a bunch of trash Mm -hmm. (laughs) so um and then the this piece is is a has a very deep sadness to it (laughs) it's a white man with no pants on i was like homeless santa claus or like santa claus during the year when it's not christmas (laughs) like that's what i looked at it like what is santa doing (laughs) the whole setup because like it was just like junky and then this naked white dude it it was yeah it was sad it was (laughs) it was very sad (laughs) you're right about that hun (laughs) yeah that whole room that room stressed me out i was like nah we need to clean up i'm sorry (laughs) you need to go sorry so we go back to um 
uh, paper boy at this point and he's he's uh made his way to like the room with the gambling and it's a twenty thousand buy-in mm-hmm. so he's got this backpack full of money which that reminded me of uh who was it was it method man and red man that used to walk around with the backpack full of money with the money i think so yeah. yeah but did you notice how they were regarding him like when he sat down it was like that you know it's twenty thousand dollars like just that typical um one of the guys the guy like I think he had on like a like a ski sweater maybe he had a beard but I think he's like dark hair had glasses maybe um he was one who like at the end was like I gotta go check on my wife and like he yeah he hopped up and left it was it was just like oh hi like I don't even know if they knew who he was they seem like the type of folks where yeah paperboy is famous but like you wouldn't know him because like you know maybe you're in like another whatever but they looked at him and it, the way I took it, they they had that attitude towards him. Like, oh, this is cute. You know, you're trying to sit down. Wait, honey, you do know it's $20,000. And he was like, oh. And then he's like, all right, well, five, 10, you know, and, and, and counts it out. And then it's, oh, it's like, oh, it's that kind of situation. It was like being in the store and like, are you here to pick someone up or make a delivery? Oh, you're Oprah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> like, that, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. So, you know, definitely that like you said at the top of the show, just still commenting on like, none of this is new to us, but seeing it in another arena and realizing like, this is not unique to America. America has its own little flavor, but like, this is where America comes from. Like, these are the motherfuckers that settled here, you know, and now I want to act like whatever. It's like, yeah, but they, they learned it from watching you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the, 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 the racism, like I said before, it's, it's more refined and it's a little bit more um, surreptitious. That was a, another thing that they brought up, this whole notion that if you are a Black creator, that you also have to look out for other Black creators. You know, so um, so they have that, that conversation about scamming. You know, he didn't trust TJ. He thought TJ was scamming Will. And I'm like, why is your loyalty with Will instead of with TJ? Which, um, which Alfred yeah. reminded me of. He's like, he's a Black artist just like that. I love when TJ comes in, you know, and enjoys the conversation. It's like, and he talks about the desire for proximity. They want to be so close to Blackness. Um, they want to put it on like a costume, which we we got into the, the, the last, um, on the last episode. Mm-hmm. They want to put it on as a, as a costume sometimes because they know there's value in being able to take it off. Um, but also they see the inherent value of being close to it, you know, being able to leverage it, exploit it and whatnot, mm-hmm. which is what Will was obviously trying to do. You know, he was trying to create his own Basquiat, you know, to the tune of $500,000. And um, so I think that number is what, what triggered Earn, like, ah, oh, you know, he's cheating this, this dude out of a half a million. Like, no, I'm giving them what they want. You know, they they want to um, they want to be all into black culture. They want they want to know how I really think, you know, how I really feel. They can they can have all this, whatever I give them for a nominal fee. So um, so Earn makes a move to benefit himself. He takes on another client or, you know, as far as is it written in stone? I don't know. But as far as this episode is concerned, he's brought on another client you know, and he's, he's sealed another avenue to where he's not completely dependent upon paper boy. And we, and we talked about that, like in a lot, like, yeah, like what's the next, the next, he's, he's thinking, he's thinking in terms of longevity and like you, you got to be able to, you know, bob and weave. You can't just be like, I'm, I'm putting all my eggs into this paper boy basket because Al Al doesn't know, like he could change his mind at, at, at any moment. Like you, Nobody can stay one thing for that long. At some point, you're not going to have people like standing outside of your very nice uh, jail cell demanding that you be free. Somebody else is going to come along. Yeah. Like, be that's just how it is. Us. So you're either going to like fade away or you'll be the person to bring in that somebody else is going to come along. So you're still there and you're getting your cut. And like, that's just, that's just smart. And that's what I'm saying. I don't know that Van uh, sees that yet, but I don't blame her. Like she, she needs to kind of, like okay I'm gonna I'm gonna sit right here and I'm and I'm gonna look because above all they do have a friendship but 
earn in the past. We got lots of, you know, evidence. He's he's flighty. Like there there do seem to be times where he's super in, in into van and then times when he's not. Um, so I, I think she's being kind of smart, but I do like not worry, but I do wonder is she is she miscalculating this one? And like maybe he is truly a viable partner now. Um but I think she should just chill and do exactly what she's doing and just wait, because she doesn't know what she wants to do yet. So that's more important. No, for her. she doesn't. Oh. I'm thinking about this. Recently, I discovered in that Helen episode where she actually said we could be good together to him in German. She said that. And he he was just like, mm, he wasn't mm-hmm. ready yet. But it, it really could have been like, well, I'm trying to to set myself up financially so that I could be, you know, the person you need to be and maybe she's just like well I how how can we can't I can't take you as you are and you know we help each other grow I think that's what she was saying so now it it seems to me like she's like okay you want to be off and do this thing you're doing this thing let me be off and be doing my thing let me figure out what my thing is you know yeah I see that because Van wasn't lost yet like she didn't know yet that she wasn't really like walking in her purpose yet so like things have changed and isn't that life like you're rarely feeling the same thing at the same time. Like you have that missed, you know, like now he's like this and she's like, well, you know, cause I mean, I, I, I really do feel like that um, in, in season two, like when she loses her job as a teacher, which is like. No, she loses her job teachers. in season one though. That was season one. I thought that was season yeah. two. Value is season one. Well, either way, what I was, the, the, the point that I was going to make is you know, teaching is something that it's super important. It's not treated that way. You know, they don't get the respect. They don't get the pay. But when you are a teacher, if you're really in it and Van seemed to be, she seemed to be in it enough to where like, it becomes a part of your identity. Like I am a teacher, like this is what I do. So then she didn't, she doesn't have that. And to me, she seemed to be like a little bit untethered since then. Now the beauty is she can kind of afford to be a little bit more untethered now because now Earn is coming up. But I think it's more important for her to figure out what is your thing going to be than just kind of like glom on to like what he's doing. Because we both know that they are quick to when things go like, no, come over here. I got you. That can change at any moment. Yeah. Can, that that yeah. can flip at any moment. Like, nigga, I just moved. And now. So I I I agree with like what she's doing. She's got to be careful because Ern's going to be in her life forever because of because the kid. Because of the child. Yeah. So. I kind of want to see Lottie. I just want to see what Lottie's up to. Yeah. There's <laughs> this this other moment that happens during the TJ, Ern, and Alfred conversation where uh, Alfred notices TJ skates. He goes, damn, them skates fire. <laughs> <laughs> I love Alfred. <laughs> yeah. He looks up like, yeah, like, he's taking me back. Taking me yeah. back to Cascade. I haven't expected them to cut to him just like... <laughs> <laughs> he's from atlanta like yeah like i think i know what i'm gonna do with my money <laughs> just like paper boys and like the o is like a little wheel and so it's like <laughs> exactly do that. season four y'all so also while this is going on um darius is continuing to hang out with socks who has him he's got he's got darius i got you he says twice and this he starts making this story up about this exchange that Darius has had with MK, you know, to where they they gather a whole crew of liberals. These are like ultra liberals. And Darius is like, why are you crying? <laughs> he starts completely making up like he had her saying all lives matter, you know, just just really pumping up the stories like and look at him like he's had to suffer through this that's the man that's the man who had to suffer that extreme racism it's like they're putting it on and wallowing in it like oh i want to feel the sensation it's like oh like you have proximity to like trayvon martin's cousin who was yeah. also who got the phone call did you see and i'm gonna do a blog post and so like you're featuring yourself like they're always like right there like yeah. all of the videos <laughs> then works them into a freeze frenzy to where they go and attack mk uh forces her fiance to dump her her fiance whose will who didn't act like he was engaged at all 
Nope, he only talked about the, the divorce. I wouldn't be surprised if that's who he divorced. It's like, these people are crazy. <laughs> like, oh yeah, her name used to be Adrian. She's actually who I divorced. <laughs> like, it's, it's random. It's random. Yeah. Um, and then what was what was the guy that came over and sat down and talked to Darius and was just like, he says this one thing and it's great what he says. And he goes, hey, you know what that is? That's the ultimate white guilt. Mm. I thought racism wasn't really a thing here like that, Darius says. I thought it was more about class. And then they have that conversation about racism and capitalism not being separate at all. It goes hand in hand. Yeah. Because you have to be able to value people to understand like who should be on top and who should be on the bottom. Yep. But then the the guy says, uh, everywhere Coke is sold, there's racism. And remember that's when Darius says, well, what about Taco Bell? And he's (laughs) like, well, they sell Pepsi. He's like, damn. (laughs) They do though. They do. They have Pepsi products because they're always hooked up, at least here, to KFC and it's Pepsi Central. But I just thought about how like, oh yeah, well, Coke is being made in Atlanta. So (laughs) anywhere we know it's sold, (laughs) there's racism. Layers on layers on layers on layers. (laughs) We find Nando laying in his bed, having a little pity party. Alfred has been passing by every window trying to find this fool because he he (laughs) says at one point, he's like, no. If we were in Atlanta, I would do this. I would do that. I'm, I got to beat this nigga's ass. Yeah. So he goes and finds him, tells him to come out. It's like, I'm not playing with you. Um, I'm not playing with you. We leave. We go back to Earn, making his deal with Will and TJ. And I love how him and TJ was like, looks like we're going to need more money. <laughs> and I'm like, that's what's up. But that image that he sees the first loan being given and there's a slave present there Mm -hmm. and i feel like that was the ghost nando was referencing Uh, yeah because he says it's it's a pale black man and he's dripping wet you know you know another thing that i thought about like going back to like the the santa claus episode where the children were happy because this this uh ashy pete not ashy pete yeah it's ashy pete yeah uh-huh. <laughs> ashy pete yeah they're waiting for him to to pull up in the harbor and get off the boat like a slave ship they're they're now venturing through the foundations of the middle passage you know of the slave trade how all this wealth was accumulated you know for centuries this yeah. wealth that this man is enjoying that they're enjoying now it was built on the backs of enslaved african labor and that is sobering and i and i guess seeing that kind of drove home that the fact that i need to get this money too you know it, i should not feel a way about it like, yeah like we always have to like well no you know that isn't the right way to go about it none of these people have gone about anything the right way. You know, it's no. why so many companies, you know, that were disavowing slavery, like all they did was just kind of switch the name or like t- to hide the origins of the fact that like, yeah, this is what we, this is our industry now, but that's not what it was before. Um, it's, if, it's just like, if you sit and just think about that, I think I shared this video with you. Maybe not. There's a woman on TikTok who who did like, she, she's like, I just really, really like numbers and thinking about numbers. And she's just sitting in her car and does like the, the calculation of what, um, of what the 40 acres and a mule would be. Like if you did it, like it's a loan. And then she, she's like, that doesn't include like, um, like all of the lawsuits, the wrongful death things, like, and not even including that she flips the number around and it's just like, yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> like, that's a lot. And that was just based on, that's like one little section. Like that's not even everybody. And yeah, you know, her, her whole point was all of these companies like were brought up to think like, well, I just need to work hard, you know, and then get here. And it's like the hard work though, that wasn't done by them. Like, yeah, you thought about some shit, but there was nothing special about your brain. You just had access. Mm-hmm. And when it was literally against the law for us to consume, to be literate, 
it's like yeah, yeah. like there's there's a, there's a little bit of like a head start happening here like I'm trying to run and you like you you got your foot on my shoestrings and then saying like well we built ourselves up no no there was a way made you know so that's bullshit like don't come in with this bullshit like oh you know blacks are lazy it's like I don't know people that work for free and literally build countries aren't lazy they they're just they're stuck they're not lazy if we're and so like lazy what are we lazy. still all doing here like, look at everything that we survived. You can't survive the shit that we've been through and be lazy, you know? <laughs> and still drive the literal culture. Like, it's us. Yes. Like how you said, the, the wanting to put on Blackness or like just being close to it. They know that shit. They know that. And so it's like, well, let's try. Let's try to just pervert everything. You know, um, uh, when Blacks are starting to realize like, hey, I'm, supposed to be here like fuck respectability um politics i'm not gonna police my behavior based on you know all those white folks over there like that's you just hear that which Mm -hmm. i know what that comes from but like it's white supremacy like we have to operate within this box right here but y'all color all outside the damn lines including just taking shit oh this is by now and like this is us oh that's culture oh that's spicy oh that's actually very smart oh it's genius we're going to take your name off of it call it ours, and then basically put you through the dark ages of not knowing, like, we created this? Hold on. Like, the amount of information that I'm consuming as a middle-aged person, when it should have been, like, in my third grade classroom, is bullshit. And it's not because, you know, I didn't want to know. It's not designed for you to know. So, Earn does the deal with TJ or whatever. Then we have Darius come in. I've never seen Darius be like, we got to go. <laughs> I was just like, oh, and shit. Yes. <laughs> yes. But Darius says, we got to go. I was like, okay. It's like, Darius, you got to like, go because this dude is not pressed by anything. <laughs> yeah. Destiny. Like, this was nice. Like, this is not my destiny. <laughs> yeah. He, yeah. He put his foot down. We have to leave. Albert sawing down the tree. The guy doesn't even come out of his room. He just stares through the, the window in horror as he cuts down like one of the oldest trees in London. <laughs> they probably hung niggas from it. Cut it down. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he said he, you couldn't smoke around a tree because it was bad for the tree. <laughs> the tree's probably like, man. <laughs> come back, come back. He was like, that's a fucking tree. I love Al- Alfred Irritated is just so wonderful. So it is but again i think we we just uh we talked about this last episode like what what's the limit dude like you're kind of building a reputation here <laughs> like for just being reckless how is it any different from the reputation you were trying to avoid from jump you know at the beginning but that's why i'm dude. saying Ern is being smart you need another client you don't know what is going to happen we see these rappers and stars like they and not just rappers, just anyone who is now, you've reached a level where people basically just blow smoke up, up, up your ass. Not that he's not talented, but he's in this, this rare air. A lot of people implode and we've seen it many times. Like, what are you doing? You're messing up. Alfred is, has not changed at all. How many times have we been recapping? And it's like, why did he do this? Like, just for one second but one thing that we know about alfred is run him his money because that's just like the little mystical uh club owner that was like melting into walls and shit like trying not to pay him and he finally was like "Uh uh-uh and he went and got his money but alfred there's no reason for him to change from his point of view and i really think that we're gonna i hope not but i really think that there's at least going to be a moment where it's like all right alfred you can continue to have this career or you can mess it up like from just these stupid things that you're doing and i kind of feel like earn just on top of being he's smart it's like i this can't be my only way that i'm eating no i got skills and they can be applied to other things just creatives period doesn't have to be this i I think that that's that, that that's a reason that he's like hmm can't just have one client because <laughs> he's a person so yeah and it and it can't be a client like paperboy who's who's increasingly reminded reminding me of um was it damon dash and <laughs> those types just like 
reckless and yeah like they've always been reckless but like now you got like a little bit of security but they act like you know it's like this isn't wealth yet like this isn't the kind of wealth that's like making more wealth while yeah. you sleep this is still like yeah you can you have an atm card <laughs> like this, this can go <laughs> at any moment you know and you're just throwing money to people oh god then that whole backpack he put it on that game i guess he, that's why he was pissed that the guy didn't give him back his money but yeah that's what i'm saying when it comes to to that but you're not being very smart and I, I I don't think that it's a coincidence. It's like, he's very much dealing. It's, it's that level of like, yeah, you, you're rich. Like he, the cash is right here. You're not yet where like your money is like on this jump drive or like <laughs> real money where yeah. it's like, you're literally like, I got this backpack of money and I'm going to gamble. Like you're that, you have that kind of level of comfort where looking at where he came from, I get it, but he's not thinking big. Hence him like, you know, I've got to do, what you go to him to diversify my portfolio? Yeah, nigga, let him do diversify your shit. Yeah, he's not thinking yes. about sus- sustainability. Stop being stupid. And I hate to say it, for the longest time, um, I get headlines about some dead rap guy, some rap guy being shot. Um, but there's been studies done, and the the two music music genres that tend to have the most deaths in it are rap, rap music, and rock. Mm-hmm. Rock. I think, you know, a lot of them, like we just saw that uh, Foo Fighters drummer died, yeah. drug related. Yeah. You know, rappers get shot. So again, like he doesn't really have a long time in the grand scheme of things. If you're just looking at what typically happens to hip hop artists and it's a shame, you know, it shouldn't, shouldn't be that way, but there's a lot of factors at play contributing to that. Number one, like you don't leave your other life behind and you, you still have that hanging like you're not inoculating yourself you know like you don't have to do shit like i'm no longer of the hood i don't know who you but like they'll still keep they still literally are dealing as if they're dealing in desperation and i think sometimes people forget like you know you were doing that because you wanted to like you were doing that because you had to you no longer have to so now take that money build an access road for your people but don't still be owing somebody named Pookie money. <laughs> like, like, why are you doing this? <laughs> well, there, there's that thing that happens, but then there's like, there's people like Young Dolph, you know, Young Dolph was very much active in his community doing charitable work and what whatnot. He got into a beef with Yo Gotti. So, oh, okay. so Young Dolph and Yo Gotti, they were actually partners at one time. And then that, devolved into a like a Biggie Smalls uh, versus Tupac type thing um Young Dolph got shot was it last year I think so last year at an ice cream joint I don't think Yo Gotti was personally responsible but he knows who did it you know and there there are guys who are just like oh I heard you know y'all got this beef going back and forth you're putting out music everybody knows your beef I could get rid of it, you know, um, for a nominal fee, you know, I could squash it for a nominal fee. So you have things like that going on, which contribute to it. Was young Dolph playing in the streets like that? I don't think he was, but you know, the still there, there's people who are running, who is straddling that fits of legitimate and hood and contributing to violence that's that's happening around this genre that doesn't need to happen no they make their so they made their getaway after al uh chops down the tree and uh mk is dumped on the street crying like we don't got we got time for that they get in the car just start cracking because what a ridiculous night (laughs) from the people in the party to the things that they they did themselves and they're just laughing at how ridiculous they are. And then their Uber driver is Socks. Was that an Uber? I don't know if it's an Uber. I guess, how was he the private car then? Like, and he that's had his why, hands. That's why they should have gotten out that damn car. I'm really kind of hoping that the next episode picks up with them still in that car. Because it because when Al looks and sees it as him and he turns and looks at the others, he looks scared, which I would too. <laughs> Like, yeah, I would look scared too. Are you taking me to where I want to go or <laughs> to Nando's other house? Like it's <laughs> the one that's like, yeah, this ain't a decoy. This is like rich man killing people. Everybody turning their head. Yeah. Or, when, you know, I don't know. 
We don't actually know who Sox is. We don't really know anything about him, but that he likes to stir up shit. And then where did he get uh, Alfred's hat from after that white girl took it? He just had it. Her, what the hell was she? What was that? She just saw her at different times, just like <laughs> just like running through like mischief maker. <laughs> like, yeah, random white girl running through the party. That's a that's kind of a, like a mainstay, like a cheese cube tray. I guess I'm not going to the right parties was like this somebody <laughs> trip this bitch like so I'm like what's what's going on let me tell Does you no one have a foot and ankle that they could just kind of stick out in, in her back it was just it was just strange it, it, it was odd and i don't know al's al's face was just like okay he was chill and everything you know he got up from the table you know i cut the tree and whatever and he was chill but like it's akin to horror movie where the person is like running for their lives but like the other thing is just kind of like walking like I'm going to get you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get you. You're going to get got. I'm not, I'm not bothered. Um, when they all got in the car, I was just like, where's Van? Right. Yeah. Why are you not concerned? Like, did you forget about Van? Yeah. I guess Ern is calling Van to see where mm-hmm. she is, but she, she left a long time ago. And honestly, I think that she peeped game a long time ago after she, she kept throwing those people into the pool after she saw that picture. Cause she did see the picture with the slave mm-hmm. in it, mm-hmm. you know, um, she got another drink and then she left and she was just she saw the call and like did she reject it but i, I know she didn't answer it she's just like mm, yeah this food yeah. is good <laughs> it just kept eating i'm not mad i'm not upset so let's go through our element my that so atlanta alfred looking at the skates that tj had on and even you said it well he is from atlanta like the <laughs> skating culture in atlanta is real he would definitely appreciate some nice skates um, but also his refusal to leave the house without taking something from this dude that was very Atlanta. Like he pretty much how he would get down to Atlanta. How, how he has before. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Watch the club, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Like, nah. um, I didn't have one. That That's a good one. Um, I didn't have one this time. Um, I had a Dariusism though. My Dariusism was when uh Ern was saying you know remember the idea that you had for the subscription weed servers and it was like bud of the month club <laughs> it was like it's prepared by real authentic mexican hands so i was like what are racist but also just like wait why those <laughs> hands it was just a random thing just off top i'm like okay darius i'm sure there'll be more but this one you know like i literally when i popped up this morning that's the phrase that was in my head like real mexican hand like, that was so random so that's my Dariusism. So Dariusism was definitely, I'm going to get a drink and find a bathroom that you don't want nobody to use. <laughs> yeah, you understand it. I understand it very well. Um, my mystical element was the ghost the rich dude fucked. <laughs> so he woke up with all this ectoplasm over him. I was like, <laughs> yeah, that sounds like semen. <laughs> so gross a nice alternate name for it though yeah it is <laughs> this is not a good word it's not a good word um that was that was definitely one um i felt like the interior of the car at the end like you know they hop in the car they're like ha 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 because on a tree you know we did it again and then you know socks is like oh the way it, it just looked weird like i just felt like get out of this car like i <laughs> Get out of the car. It's just all of a sudden, because like when he turns, and it's probably like one of those sports cars that, you know, it's like it's really pointed or it's got a lot of space in the front. Like there's more space for the console and the dash than there is for your body. But it just all of a sudden started to look like it's just like a piece of the channel and it's just like above ground. I don't think he's going to take you back to your hotel. Get out of the car. You should not be fleeing a party with someone who's from the party after you just did what you just did. You know, I feel like if this is supposed to be an Uber, Uber has no record of this particular vehicle. Get out of the car. So Yeah, I don't I don't know, like, okay, I guess you wouldn't have to pull up an Uber on the phone. So I think he was calling an actual driver, but so that guy was the driver. He's sitting there like taking drugs, drinking with the rest of the party. So many <laughs> reasons to get out of the car. Yeah. <laughs> From practical like that to what I think is literally vehicle to hell. Like I said, I don't know if, if we were recording, we just and I chatting. I was like, 
I feel like they should have closed with how way to hell. I'm like, is this a season finale? <laughs> so yeah, that was my mystical element. Okay. Okay. So SGR, what was your SGR? When Alfred Best Nando or Lucifer, what I'm calling him, in poker, and everybody was like, oh, you hear that? My phone's ringing and just disappeared. It was like, oh, oh no. I don't think you're supposed to beat him. I think everybody knew that except for you. Yeah, I have to agree. I, I think like uh, when Alfred was like, yo, I am not going to let him take my money. I'm going to do what needs to be done. The cutting down the tree, I don't, I don't know if that would be something that happened in real life. I guess it could, like, why not? <laughs> I mean, again, the, the recent history, like the impossible has been happening every day. Um, yeah, like, I don't think we can question anything. It's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, but him taking the Nandos out of everybody's hand, like, you didn't pay for this shit anyway. <laughs> It's so petty. It's like, I'm not having a good time. Nobody's going to have a good time. And as a Scorpio, I, you know, yeah, I, I get that. that. I, fucks with it. Yeah. I get it. Everyone must be unhappy. Hello, I'm not happy. Neither are you. Oh, you are? Just wait. <laughs> <laughs> Hold my rage. I'll be right back. My rage. All right, we're done. Thank you for watching. Rap in Atlanta is recorded and produced by Nita Sharice and Nikki Ebo. Our theme music is Joy Clark's Galaxy Groove, performed by Joy Clark. Discover more about this talented artist at joyclarkmusic.com. Rap in Atlanta's artwork is created by Prime Vice Studios. Learn more about this intellectual property development agency at primevice.com. You can find us on your favorite podcast player as well as YouTube. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and follow Rap in Atlanta on Twitter and Instagram at Rappin' Atlanta.